I felt a clog though. Okay, a little wire brush. There's a tiny bit of corrosion on this, uh, what do you call it, a uh, multi uh, welch plug. We'll clean that up. Now, one thing we're going to do, now that we've made a mess already, get some fuel, and we'll just rinse this carburetor with. I cover things up, eh? We'll just give it a we'll just give it a rinse. And one more thing to check: the million-dollar bolt. It's actually a jet, right? We have to be able to squirt through that direction, and then from the top, we should see a T. Mm. Well, let's plug one end with a, with a finger. It should go L. Same thing. No, it's not. It's plugged. Dirty dog. I'm glad you caught that. Let's see if we can get this with a wire. Yeah, I can feel it. There, it's open now. Yep, million dollar bolts open. So if I plug it with one hand now, one finger, it should shoot L through there. Not much. There. Oh, you guys got sprayed in the face. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Chief. Would you believe? Before we go any further, we're going to put the needle on the float. We're going to put the float in onto the rubber seat. I'm using my words. It's like I was in school. Use your words, Bruce. Okay. And now we're going to give this a little test. Just a little testicle. I'm just doing it here for you now. If I don't wiggle, it holds seven. So that's going to work. So I try not to get anything like fuel or anything into that tester because it it can uh, muck your life up. Okay, bowl on. Same seal. Now we're on the rebuild of this. All it cost me so far is a bimetal strip arm. And we're going to attach this carburetor. Now, if you can see, remember we're doing a basket case. Right there, there's a rubber o ring that hasn't come off. So we're lucky in that regard. And let's get that carburetor on there with two. I think he's got them in a little bag. Hopefully he's got them both in here. So we have to connect. Are you guys watching now? Hey, heads up. Make sure you're watching. Alright. So now we're going to connect up the throttle from the governor. Right. And then this just bolts on here. These are probably the nicest carburetors to work on. This this is this type this model of lawnmower, this quantum, I actually prefer it to the Hondas. There is less fiddling around. They last just as long.
We need fuel from the from the fuel tank now too, eh? As soon as we get this carburetor hooked up to the auto choke, we'll put the fuel tank on. Because we kind of know already that the coil works, right? The piston has been going up and down on it. Now, we mount the plastic choke activator. Is this it? I think it is. Okay, now, this goes into here for the choke activation. This goes across here. Like that. And then there should be a long pin uh, these are called uh, shoulder bolts. This is a really long shoulder bolt. Goes down through there. Quarter inch drive. Now, the mum that brought this to me. Okay, look at what we have now. Look at the choke. We don't have a spring and that little spring if you don't have it you would want to do anything to get it right there and we pull this over to ooh I'm gonna fix it just a little bit it's kind of stretched I do have another one I do not want to use it good connect that to there And on, oops, from there to there. See that? Isn't that a beautiful thing? And then when the heat comes on, it turns off the carburetor. And I'm going to just make it slightly more aggressive because the older they get, the weaker those things become. Now I do have another spring in this mess here somewhere. Right here. You see this spring here has no kink in it. And you know what, I just might replace that. I'll show you in just a minute. Hang on, baby. When you use your part, used parts, you should use your best used parts. Okay, did you see this spring, like that, versus this little guy? I'll just take it off if I can, without dropping it on the floor. I will use this in another day if I have to. You can get them too. But look at the two different springs, right? So I'm going to use this one. Stick that on there. Stick this end onto that little hook. Ooh, I don't have a flashlight. Almost need a flashlight for this because everything's black. Good. Okay. So I think we're just about done in here. Yep. Now we can put the hood back on. How's our rope? It actually looks okay. Lovely. No binding. Now we're going to put the cover back on. And I took three bolts off of there. And luckily, there's a fourth bolt in the bag. And I think the shorter bolts go in the back. That's something I've never figured out, eh? And then we got to get the tank on. So when we got this basket case, we didn't have a bolt in there, eh? Good. This thing's starting to look like a lawnmower. Gas tank. Oh, dipstick tube. Don't forget the dipstick tube. 
Hey, that'd be a good name for a band, eh? Hey, it's Bruce Pender and the Dipstick Tubes. <laughs> oh, I think that's funny. Bruce Pender and the Dipstick Tubes, yeah. Are you guys still with me? All right, gas tank. We're gonna swish it out. He's got a pencil stuck in there. And it's stuck. Dirty dog. Yeah. Watch your eyes, Bruce. There we go. Dude, I got the pencil out. I almost broke it. Now there's a little bit of gas in here. Quite a bit more gas than I thought. Cold it is. Hey Bruce, lunch time. All right. <laughs> am I lucky or what? Talk to you later. Man, am I lucky. So now I've got this gas tank. I'm going to put some old gas, old good gas in it. And we'll pour it into one of these cups here. We'll just see how much crud we get out. Whoa! More than I thought. Oh, it was right near the end. Yeah, there, there was some sawdust and stuff in there. Why is it not emptying as fast as I want it to? Okay, now there's two things we need to mount this tank. There's a bushing. Help me. There it is. Okay. Now what did I do with that green clamp and the thing and the thing? First thing we got to do is take this cable off of here. Put it through here. Set this on here, but now we need the clamp. Where's the pliers? Right here. This is the exciting part, you guys. Not many hours on this machine. Okay, let's tighten that clamp up. And go. Now, there's a 3 8 inch bolt that holds the tank in. It rotates, eh? Okay, that's a, th and I think it's a 3 eighths too. Just tighten that guy up, if we can get there. Good. All right, I'm just going to attach the tank down. There's three bolts. I loosened the big 3 8 one that holds the tank on the pivot, just to get this out of the way. And then we'll go back down and retighten the pivot. I'll show you what I mean. Good. Kind of torqued it a little bit. You might notice, but I changed this to a longer shaft. And now I can just reach in and redo this tank bolt. Good. Doesn't sit perfectly there, but. FYI, guys. Hey, ooh. This goes between the tank and the body, not not against the screw like that. It goes in like this into the. Uh, it's like it's like a sleeve or a 
uh, almost like a shoulder washer, not a shoulder bolt. That'll sit better. I'm going to just see what that feels like with a ratchet. It went in snarky, didn't it? What's next? Air filter. But I've only got two of these. I need three. But I've got I've got stuff in the hoard now. So come with me now. Look at that. I was working on the switches there with that electrical box. My inside hoard. Might as well use the daylight, eh? There it is, there it is, there it is, yay! That's why you keep stuff, guys. I have friends that, I have friends that don't keep stuff and I have friends that keep everything. I'm in the middle. I keep the little stuff. Almost be there, eh? And, oh, and the gasket's still on there, by the way, right there. Are we watching? Let me just make sure. Good. Now, this tube has to be plugged in right there to the tube that's hanging down. That's the breather tube. And that just burns any exhaust or burns any crankcase gases that build up. Did you hear that soft touch there? There aren't enough O's and smooths to describe that. Zippo Varga taught me that. Go to his channel. Fun guy. We're running out of bolts. That doesn't mean anything on the basket case though. I wouldn't call this one a severe basket case. I'd like, I'm going to leave this one off until we see how it performs. I'm going to leave the air filter off. It's just a, it's just a hood. All right. So that's about it. We just have a couple of body, body washers left. I think we can put some gas in this guy. Are you guys ready for that? Well, let's put the cover on. Let's take it as far as we can. And then this comes down and sits on there. And then after this goes on, something like that. Good. Okay, so we need another drill. This is why I have three of these. Now, I always preach this is plastic, so... I'll tighten them with the screwdriver. Okay, let's get some nice clean gas in here. Are we ready to go? Let's just uh, check, see how sharp the blade is for... How does our blade look? You know, it looks really good. I'm not going to sharpen that. And then, this belt may have to be changed. I don't know. It looks good under there. Everything's tight. I'm just going to take a... 9 16 box end wrench and put a little torque on there. Oh, yeah, I got it. I've got about a sixteenth of an inch on it. It's perfect. Okay, so now are you guys ready? Let's plug the spark plug in first. Oh, I have to go into the house and uh, make sure everything's good in there. We got our little baby coming. <laughs> when I said we got a baby coming, I meant that we have 
a baby, a two-year-old baby coming to visit. Don't panic. We don't have to put on a pot of hot water yet. Baby's here. All right, my friends, we have a small problem here. Right here, our unit is not grounding out with the movement of the uh, st dead man cable. It's just barely touching. So, I think it's just an adjustment right there. So let me just get a little bit of carb spray and get the dirt off of it first. I just think it needs to be tweaked. So now this is the third problem, right? Oh yeah. Okay, I want you to see something. If you can get in there, right here, you see that lever is out and it's back in and it's out and it's back in. That is supposed to be moving, oh excuse me, that is supposed to be moving this guy up to touch the ground. To touch the ground? He's moving up to touch the ground. That's an oxymoron. So we want to see that little tab move a little bit, eh? I don't know how much of an adjustment it is. Clamp on there. We might even use a crescent wrench. Hey Jim! You guys are still with me? Good. I'm going to just take that tiny little bar right there and move it up. I only moved it about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Now you're going to see some... So you guys are looking from there to there, right? It's crooked. See that movement? Now there's a positive movement there. I'm going to check it electrically now. So I've got the coil disconnected, right? And I'm seeing 1.2 ohms. You guys can watch it with me. Okay, 1.2 ohms. I have to reach a bit. And it goes to open. 1.2 open. Now, the big thing is we're going to plug the electric starter back in. And that shouldn't make that much difference. One point eight. Open. Perfect. We're there. Now let's plug the coil in. So now what I did there was I just put the wire through there. Right there. You can see it's wiggling. And we'll just do it one more check electrically to make sure nothing's well it's gonna change because now you're measuring the resistance of the coil on that tab. Okay. 2.7 to 4. That's good. So I'm measuring 4 ohms on the coil. That's just fine. Okay, let's put this bad boy back together. See how slow those are going in? And I tighten them up. Oops. And then we got our air filter cover to stick on. Five sixteenths. I know you should be over here watching it. Eh? Good. And then uh, this goober.
And then an air filter. And the air filter cover. Okay, so this one is slightly damaged. It's been cracked right there. This goes into here, and I do not want to take that off again. But I think we can do it. Just tap that bad boy in there till she's flush. So he just grabbed that and yanked it off, eh? Good. Now a Phillips screwdriver for cover. Yeah, that should work. What's missing? Plug that in. And I believe we've got a running machine. Anything left? Goes on the cover for the front wheel drive. All right, guys. Functional test one. Let's just give it a little start. See if the wheels go round and round. We still have to change the oil, right? I'm not going to bang my arm on a, on a vice or anything like that. Eh? Okay, let's see what we got. thing I want to check out is because I got grass out of every single nick and cranny of this bad boy. I'm going to just lift up the front end a little bit with this piece of wood. I'm going to pull off the wheels and s maybe I'm inviting trouble. But hey, 9 sixteenths. Good. Okay, let's pull this wheel off of here. Oh, that's great. Good. Lovely. 